welcome back, welcome back to Open Your Eyes. That was a flashback Friday, then again, another favorite of mine. All the way back in 1987, a conversation with uh, Lord Michael Ashcroft. And uh, Billy's all over. That was the title of it. But nonetheless, we're about to move on into uh, other things. Another favorite of mine. It is time to brock it down with Jenny. Jenny Level. Yes. Jenny Lovell is actually in with us. Hi, Jenny. <laughs> Hi, good morning. How are you? Nice to see you. <laughs> you can see us today? I can see you. Oh, Ooh, wow. It's nice to see you, Jenny. Really, really <laughs> nice to see you. Really nice to see you. And how are you today? How is the weather in Belma Pan? Wet. Oh. Wet and hot. Yeah, well, Wet and hot. Seems to be the same over here, it's too. It's a trend. But, Jen, it's great uh -huh. to see you. And I know you're happy because this time you can get some of our facial cues. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And we have a really interesting conversation lined up for today. So um, tell us, uh, relationships in COVID-19, yeah. what are we talking about here? Yeah. Well, what I've been hearing is like a lot of our folks are just not getting along. Mm. Um, and I, you, you know, you understand why you're caught together. Um, you, you're locked up together in a home with children sometimes. Yeah. Every day, all day long. And if your relationship, if you're not working on it, there are going to be problems, yeah. which is what we're seeing. Um, a lot of people are just not getting along. So I put together a few things that have been some of the issues coming forward to talk about today. How's okay. That? All right. Yes. Well, let's jump on into it. So, this time is just, whoa, time to on side, Jen. So let's, uh, jump on, let's jump on into it. Uh, before we continue on, I've got to see your nails match your lip match your house too. So that's a good way to get things started. <laughs> let's get on into this. Let's get on into the slide, gents. First things first, what do we have lined up? Um, well, uh, just talking about, um, you know, healthy, keeping a healthy relationship during this period. Yeah. Listen, if you look at what's happening with the jumpers and everything else, I am just really concerned about where this is going to lead. And I hope we don't end up going back into quarantine. Yeah. Yeah. But we have to keep, we have to keep positive and people have to be aware of how to keep their relationships strong. Mm -hmm. A lot of us do, you know, a lot of people do, but I just want to remind everybody of some of the important things. Okay. Um, this, these are extraordinary times where in a period where, um, this has never happened anywhere in the world before a pandemic worldwide where we're getting this many people getting sick and if you're looking at the television it don't limit your time doing it really yeah all it does is get you all stressed out and nervous yeah okay yeah you can't remember your your relationship can withstand what's going on you really can if you both put in the effort okay yeah. and i'm talking about um personal relationships yeah I'm not talking about work relationships or friends relationship I'm talking about oh. <coughs> relationships with your partner all right okay so tip number one don't make assumptions about somebody else's feelings mm -hmm. um, you know that leads to mind reading and I don't know about you all but I don't have a crystal ball and I uh, certainly uh. can't tell what somebody's thinking or feeling. But, you know, we catch ourselves, that I, I know you probably do, catch yourself saying, and I know exactly what you're to think. Yep, and I know, I know exactly too. what you're going to say. <laughs> <laughs> or yes. I know exactly what you're going to do, yep. Uh-huh, and, and that's mind reading. Yeah. So instead of doing that and, and getting the wrong thing and getting some the other person upset yeah. or hurt, ask. How are you feeling today, love? Yeah. Is there something happening? You, you look you look stressed. Yeah. Can we talk about it? So ask the questions, but lovingly. Lovingly. <laughs> no, no, we're wrong with you. <laughs> not no, none of the words. Not all right, you do know. Coming here with your face on makeup, but, you don't think I had a rough day. Jen, this okay, goes so, both ways, of course, right? Because I, I think this is key to say. Sometimes we do the mind reading, and sometimes we are expecting mind reading on the other end. Yeah. Like, yeah. they should just know 
that I came home and I'm being different or feeling different or, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. <laughs> I yep. had they a bad day. Yes. yes. They should know. Yes. They should know. But yeah, yes. I, think, I think one of the things, Marlene and, and, and Jen, what I, one of the things I think work perfectly in this particular time would be to know each other's love language. So, you, you know, I think... Um, oh, Lord, yes. Yes. If we, if we know that, then we know, one, the approach. Um, um, we know the approach. And we know how to quell to a certain yeah. extent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think for love me, love it's just not really assuming well. and yeah. not assuming that somebody knows and not assuming about the other person. That's true. Just <laughs> say, just say, ask lovingly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the next slide, number two, tip number two. You really need to understand how each of you responds to stress. That's right. Women respond to stress differently from men. Right? We get stressed out. We, we, we tend to take care of it by crying or um, we will isolate. Guys are different. Um, they, they were not socialized to do those things. And so they will go to their cave and lock their door. And They'll drink. You assume right away, yeah. Or, but you assume right away that it's something about you and it's yeah. against you. And really and truly, it's not. He just, he's isolating in his own way. Um, so you need to know, we both, we, we both need to know how we behave under stress and how we respond to stress. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if we just take the time to learn that little bit of information, it, oh my goodness, it saves so much heartbreak. You know, all the stress of, of arguments. We'll talk about arguments in a little bit too. Right. Next slide, please. Am I like short on time today? Yes. <laughs> okay, so let's let's move yeah. along quickly. <laughs> next slide, next slide. Keep, keep communica communication. Yeah. Keep communication open and ongoing. You know how so, there are some people who give the silent treatment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm angry with you, so I just will not talk to you. But how can you solve problems if you're not talking to each other? Right? Very important to talk to each other. Use I statements because if you say if you know, if you say I feel what I'm doing is I am claiming my feelings yes. and in Belize we don't like to do that and say you said this and you said that but what happens is that turns into blame it turns into a blame game but once you get into that blame game then it leads directly to a quiet uh, yeah. to a quarrel so it's really important to own your feelings and say I feel. I think and share that with your partner. Yeah. Okay. Next slide. Engage in uninterrupted listening. That I call that active listening. Yeah. Uninterrupted listening is sitting quietly. And what, what, what I'm recommending that couples do is <clears throat> Put on a timer for five minutes, or three minutes, three minutes, and let that person talk without interrupting. You do not interrupt. You can make body language, you can give cues, shake your, nod your head, mm -hmm. uh, may you say things like, mm -hmm, I understand, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very important that you give the respect and the love to that person for minutes just to listen to what they have to say and then guess what their turn to listen for three minutes and yeah. you can say what you have to say okay it's really a, it's a technique they use in couples counseling yeah and it's really a good technique for, for anyone to avoid quarrels because people feel listened to they feel validated when you sit and you listen and you say mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh -huh, okay so you said uh -huh. set a timer and th that's important because three minutes you don't want to you don't want them to run on yeah. and on and on i will forget everything if, if you run on for 10 minutes okay. but if you do three minutes i have the opportunity to, to hear what you're saying yeah. and then timer turns up i can yeah. respond in my three minutes yeah. or i can explain in my three minutes I was but saying, what it does it, it it forces one party to listen and the other party yeah. to be able to express without interruption yeah. and the timer is is a bit unnatural i'm saying it because i know some people are gonna maybe try to guess the time but it's key no, that you you actually important. set a, a timer, timer. Yeah. 
Yes. Um, yes. Or really I know good. I know there's also the talking stick. That's also a really great way too. Oh, I love my talking yeah. stick. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, but they, I use it. I use it in couples counseling. Yeah. You give um, uh, and you people at home can do this. What the person with the talking stick is the only person who speaks. Talks. Yes. The other person listens, and then you hand over the stick. You don't go on and on. When you you made just talk long enough for the person to remember, so that they can give you feedback. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. And only the person with the talking stick yeah. can talk. Yeah. And the key so, thing in these timers and sticks, if people choose these measures, is to force a situation where you can listen and one person is uninterrupted when they're talking, right? Which is usually hard in a fight. Yeah. yeah. It, it, really, it really puts the fight on hold. Yeah. Right? Sometimes it stops it all together because I'm being listened to, yeah. I'm being respected, you know? I, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling... Like, okay, this person understands, my, my partner understands what I'm trying to say here. Mm-hmm. Okay, let me move on because I can see that she's rushing me. <laughs> Without communication, there is no relationship. Without respect, there is no love. Without trust, there is no reason to continue the relationship. Yeah. Big thing here, keep major decisions on the back burner. You don't have to make the big big decisions like okay we're going to go out and buy a house or no we're going to sell the house right now people are stressed out this is not the time to make big decisions yeah. put it off for a while longer until things settle down and calm down yeah. and then together decide what decisions you need to make but this is not a good time to try to do that okay everybody's under stress okay we're all under stress and couples are under more stress so Particularly right now, with school get um, you know getting ready to be open, yeah. families are under stress. So, next slide. I'm going to get through the slides, then we can talk. Deal? Yes. Okay. So if you feel an argument coming on, take for heaven's time. sake, take a time out. Now, let me tell you about timeouts. You tell your partner, "Time out. I need to take um, what, 15 minutes, 20 minutes." Say the amount of time you'll be gone on your time out. And make sure you come back at the end of that time. You still need more time, you come back and ask for more time. But the idea is, if things are getting heated, take a time out. Because it's when people get heated, they say things that they don't mean, they say nasty things. It's really not, it's not worth it. So take a time out. Use the international side of time out. Okay. <clears throat> Come back when both of you are calm enough to discuss, discuss, not quarrel. Okay. Talk through things. Okay. Tip number seven. Do give out some thank yous. Be grateful. Your partner's doing everything they can, I'm quite sure. And you are too. We compliment each other, say thank you for little things that they do. You know, the more you say thank you, the more things they want to do. Yeah. The more they want to interact with you, they want to help you. Positive feedback. Mm-hmm. Yes, man. Mm-hmm. So say thank you. And for heaven's sake, give out some compliments. Sweetheart. I gave an I put some little things there about accepting compliments. Sweetheart, that just looks so beautiful on you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. That's all you have to thank you. I'm glad you like it. I'm just thinking of how terrible we are at accepting compliments. Well, I'm giving you such a good time sometimes. I'm here for some people to practice. Just laughing. What's what's a comeback to a compliment like that? (laughs) Which one? You did try pop a show. Which one? No. It's all good, Jenny. It's all good, Mar. <laughs> really, it is. Yes. I, one of the things that I do, and, I, and, I, and I've got to say thanks to both of you, is that I, I listen and then apply the method, and, and it makes things better. I'm actually doing exactly what the audience is doing at this particular point, listening and then applying the method, because honestly, it does work. So it's a very good way to start your day, to give a compliment, yes. to say something that, that could eventually make somebody's day. You know how productive that individual um, can be? So it's all about listening and understanding and applying the method. 
Yeah. And ladies, it's okay to tell another lady that, wow, I like that outfit. I love her hairdo. Oh, we, yes. We don't compliment each other yeah. enough. And all you have to say, ladies, gentlemen, thank you. Wow, that's, that's it. So nice of hey, thanks, man. That's it. Yeah. I appreciate it. That's thank it. you. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a skill that, that comes with, yeah. that has the come with practice though because for some reason we just never learned that one yeah that's true i know true. i know we didn't all right okay tip number seven tip number eight, eight. Oh, tip number eight that was the eight structure 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 i've been talking about structure ever since we started with corona that's we've right. got to keep the kids on the school with structure we have to have structure we cannot forget to build structure into into everything that we're doing because for a while there, we were home, and some people are still at home. And if you're waking up late and you haven't put in structure into getting up in the morning, you get up at 11, 12, you missed most of the day already. So you've got to have a structure in the morning. Get up and, and make breakfast for your family and have breakfast together. Or have make, make breakfast for your children, so leave them in bed for a little bit. And you have breakfast together so you have some, some, um, some us time, huh? mm -hmm. some things that you can do as a couple, build in some romantic nights where you make something special, put out the candles, um, put candles around the bathtub and just soak together when the kids are in bed. I mean, do, do something different and special to keep your romance alive. Yeah. Um, there's all these museums that give our, um, right now, uh, Giving free virtual tours. Have, have you taken any of them, Marlene? Or, or no, that? I haven't. Oh my I gosh, I went through the Guggenheim Museum. Oh. And I went through the Museum of London. Uh huh. And um, I'm going through the Taj Mahal. Like, when would I ever get to go to the Taj Mahal? So I am. Uh, but never there. say never. Maybe seeing it online <laughs> will make you want to get there. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. And I really encourage folks to um, to take that, a that's virtual That's a cool tour. activity, yeah. Pardon? I said that's a cool activity. Oh, it's great. Yeah. And it's free. People pay big money to go into these. It's absolutely free right now. And the last thing, turn off the gadgets at the dinner table when you sit down to eat. Turn them off. Tell the kids to turn them off. In fact, don't bring it to the table. Meals need to be um, Or even the television event. in the background. Right, gadgets, yeah. everything. Gadgets, turn it all off. Yeah. Right. Really turn it off. Um, John, John, John I'm trying to figure problem? out if it's like no guilt or <laughs> something here, Kenny. I need <laughs> you here to read <laughs> these verbal. No, I'm listening to I'm listening to, uh, to turning off the gadgets and uh, man, um in my in my house. Just for it's for a meal. Especially yeah. for, for a meal. Oh. <laughs> It's just, I mean, we, we, we need to have a whole conversation on yes. that, what we're doing with our life with How uh, to turn off phones, the gadget yeah. and, you know, what are some of the strategies to get folks to turn off the gadget? You know, yeah. so we need to have another conversation on that. That's, that's why, again, you story. build structure. Yeah. If you tell kids, <laughs> do not bring your, your iPhone, your iPads to the dinner table. To, you, they come in and you have your meals and people don't rush to you as you talk, find out what's happening, how people are feeling. Have discussions like you're not having any more. Just start having them. Yeah. It's yeah. a wonderful way to reconnect with family and with your partner. That's right. Right? Yeah. Right. Um, at night, we turn on this infernal television and sit there and watch TV instead of hugging and kissing or whatever before you go to bed or praying, for heaven's sake. We're just watching the television and television puts us to sleep. We watch, it watches us as we fall asleep. Isn't that crazy? So we're too locked into the gadgets. So I'm really, really begging people to turn off the gadgets for periodic, periodic yeah. moments. It's bedtime, food, um, just family chats. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is that my last slide? I think so. I was rushing to get through that. <laughs> Where's Shan? There's your slide. There's Create slide. your bulletproof relationship. Yeah. Oh, yes. You want to keep your relationship long term and you want it to be a special relationship. You got to work. You've got to put the time in. You've got to invest the time into the relationship. And even in time of COVID, especially in time of COVID, yeah. it's really important that you invest the time in your partner, 
and your partner invest the time in you. Yeah. Otherwise, you'll be stepping out on you. So you've got to make the effort to do what is necessary to keep your relationship alive and vibrant. Now, a couple things I wanted I wanted to ask. See, I, I, I did good. I waited till the end. You had the talking stick. <laughs> <laughs> but um, one, you know, Jen, I think I appreciate you having this conversation because I think that what it will do is make a lot of people have a sigh of relief that they're not the only ones struggling um, in keeping things uh, in harmony at home. And, you know, I, I think actually the data has shown across the world, and in fact in China, they, they, they had such a spike in divorces after their first uh, lockdown because wow. people weren't getting along at home. Right. Um, so one, right. you're kind of letting us all know that, hey, we're all having a hard time adjusting. Yeah. Um, and secondly, acknowledging the work that goes into it. My question was, you know, the work has to be equal. What do you do if you feel like the other person isn't isn't pulling their their weight? If you're gonna work on a relationship, you gotta work together too. Invite them. Yeah. You can't demand. You cannot demand that from a yeah. partner. You have to invite them to engage. Yeah. All right. Hey, John, what do you think? I'm listening. Yeah, I'm listening. I know. I want you to see <laughs> his face right now. And I'll tell you what, you're, you know, you're totally right. It's uh, invite them. I, I, yes. I try to, I try, we try to keep a, a strong relationship by having conversations, relevant yeah. conversations. Yes. And if we yes. see that there is something that is, that is lacking over this side, that's the point that we will try to at least push a little. Because our point, and uh, especially having a family, our goal is actually to live together for, you know, throughout. That's yeah. our goal. But the only way we could carry out that goal or that mission of that goal is that we solidify where we can and then we ease at things where we could not and uh, where, we, where we know we can as well. That would eventually provide a flourishing flower for the entire family. Yeah. And that's what I think we should do as well. So that's, uh, for me, <coughs> it's a listening and applying the method, Jenny. That's and what I do. I wanted to add in another question, just looking at what do you do when they're actual like a crisis in in the family um you know mom or dad has lost a job so there's stress but then there's a real life crisis as to how you're going to yes. meet expenses how do you how do you Pers work through that personally i think it's really important to have talk to, talk to mom and dad for example if somebody lost the job right you don't want to adultify the children by bringing them into something that's stressful yeah, yeah. But it's so important that as a spouse, you don't jump all over your husband. He's already stressed out mm -hmm. about not having work or maybe the potential that he may lose his job. True. Right. That's when you need to be your most understanding. And then start figuring out ways how you can help. If you're, a, if you're in the home and you're not working, figure out what things you can do. I mean, you know how people look down on, on, on selling um, um, food and look down on, on making things. We have to get creative in about yep. doing other things from the home because by the looks of things, this is going to be with us for a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So we have to figure out ways to make some money to help our spouse yeah. so that there is a little more money in the home, mm -hmm. particularly to pay for some of the little small bills. But we have to get a whole new attitude about looking at different things to do. I mean, you know, a lot of times we have this attitude that well, I don't need that, mm -hmm. uh, or, or we look down on certain certain um, yeah. jobs. A lot of our neighbors are probably working. Two people are out working. This is an opportunity for people to do little jobs, like take do some babysitting, yeah. to sell, uh, prepare uh, meals for for families and tell them how much you charge them to have their meals when they come home. I mean, there's so many things that people can think about doing. It's just a matter of sitting and thinking how you can help your partner. And you know, and you know Jenny, uh, you know, at this particular point, um, we need to be compassionate with each other as well. Because when you support somebody, it's because you're actually empathizing, but you're com being compassionate, you're supporting. And the only mm -hmm. way we could, the only way we could make, out, make it out of uh, situations like this is to continue to support each other. You yes, know, and, you and this to. is this is very. I'll give you a, 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 a typical example. So I went to one of the super, uh, supermarkets, and I wanted some beans. You know, and I took a walk around, and they were actually imported, and they were actually beans in the freezer that was already blended. 
Yes, yes, I saw that. They blended beans so right here like from Belize. Beans. And they tell you, you know what? It's pinto beans. This one is black beans. This one is red kidney beans. Mm -hmm. Blend it already. All you need to do is to tie yes. it out and then you add it your seasoning. But I, okay. yes. I say this, Jenny uh, and Marlene. I say this. My compassion and my love for country, knowing that in order for us to continue to build is to continue to support, is that I'll buy this one. And the only way they yeah. could be better at what they do is that if they're being supported. So yeah. I, think, I think that's one of the ways we could continue to move on. And it happens with the family, it happens with your neighbor, and it happens with your country. That's how I feel about it. We have to get creative. We have, yeah. to, you know, we have to start thinking of ways to make our money. Yeah. Creative ways of making money. Yeah. Being, and again, being supportive to our, our partners. Yeah. Particularly the ones who are out there working in yeah. the home. And, and instead of getting upset, talk about things that might be upsetting you. Yep. But if your partner is stressed, find ways to help that person to get past the stress. Yeah. Okay? Okay. All right. Totally understood, Jenny. Well, Jenny, the uh, tips on how to keep your relationship strong during COVID-19. Yes. Um, I think, you know, everybody appreciates them. Don't make assumptions. Yeah. Uh, set a timer for conversations. And uh, get away from the gadgets. So many useful tips, I think, uh, that can really make for better quality time together. Yeah. Quality time. I love it, Marlene. You said it perfectly. Yeah. Quality time. Well, I'll tell you what, Jenny. We love spending quality time with you. I know. <laughs> and we've just made our deadline at this point. Thank you so much, Thank you. Jen. Thank you. <laughs> okay, guys. Bye-bye. All Thank right. Take bye -bye. care. <laughs> And just like that, uh, time has just dwindled by. It's always a nice time hanging out with Jenny. And we advise for you to uh, take heed of these conversations and apply those methods, all right? Speaking of applying the method, we need to apply the method of Dr. Binox. All right, so it's time for, it's time for Kids Time with Dr. Binox. Today, it's a very, very uh, important conversation with him because many a times, mommy would tell you, mind you get cavities. Stop eating that because you might get some cavities. 